Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hey there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krauss, and today we are going to be talking about are you eating the right fats? So do you find yourself feeling chronically just inflamed? Maybe you're having trouble recovering from workouts. Maybe your moods are all over the place. Perhaps you're super forgetful. Maybe allergies plague you each spring, summer, or fall. Maybe you're struggling to get your cholesterol in check. Maybe your liver is fatty. Maybe you're having difficulty seeing. So your vision isn't what it used to be. Well, I have found in my practice that over and over again, folks are deficient in their omega-3 fatty acids. Now, most of us have heard you've got to get your fish oils, you got to eat your fish, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you've heard you've got to get your flax seed, your chia to get your omega-3s. Well, you might be getting in a whole bunch of this stuff, but you might have a deficiency in vitamin B6. Now, I talked about that in my episode 28, Muscle Wasting and Being Overfed and Undernourished. And it's a common deficiency, this vitamin B6 thing, and it goes hand in hand with not getting the right omega-3 fatty acids in. So it could be that you're not eating the omega-3 fatty acids, or it could be that you're not absorbing vitamin B6 and you can't convert that fat you eat into useful omega-3s. So that could be a big issue. So I see this, unfortunately, in about 75% of my patients that I test for their nutrient deficiencies. And of course, I am on the last episode of my five episode series here in terms of what I commonly see as deficiencies in patients in my Nutra eval testing by Genova Diagnostics. Now, I highly, highly, highly recommend that pretty much everyone take an omega-3 fatty acid. Now, my favorite form is a fish oil form, but I understand that not everybody is into fish oil, and so I do recommend some of the vegan sources, such as walnuts, flax, and uh, chia seed, too. Now, these guys, you don't want them roasted. Roasted walnuts, roasted nuts of any kind are crap. They've been heated up to the point that now the oils in them are rancid, so that's a waste of time. Make sure that you get raw walnuts, your flax, you want to take the whole seeds home and grind them yourself because if they're ground and they sit on the shelf, you have no idea how long they've been in that bag ground sitting on that shelf. So by the time you get them, you might not even be getting too many omega-3s out of there. Maybe you're getting some, let's say, fiber, but you might not be getting much else out of that. So keep that in mind. Now, another big thing that I see in my practice is that way too many of us are getting omega-6 fatty acids. Like, we got that covered. Nobody seems to have any deficiency in the omega-6 fatty acid department. So where do we get omega-3, sorry, omega-6 fatty acids from? We get them from vegetable oils. It's, it's the processed oils, cotton seeds, sunflower, safflower. Now, you might be thinking, well, sunflower and safflower, I was told those are healthy. Well, they are if it's expeller-pressed. But if it just says sunflower, safflower, cottonseed, peanut oil, and there's nothing in front of it, and it's just those names and then oil, you're getting a refined oil. And that's a bummer. And most of the time when you're going out to eat, you are going to be getting some sort of a vegetable oil blend, which could be soybean, corn, and uh, who knows... um, mystery oil. So that's not a good thing. Um, that's, that's definitely not good. And so your omega-6s are going to be elevated in this case. Even labels that say organic sunflower oil, organic safflower oil, well, guess what? It, if it doesn't say expeller pressed, it's, that's a problem. The other thing is ex- all of the, the processed grains, these guys are high in omega-6s too. So when I look at a profile of fatty acid balance in someone, 
if I see the omega sixes off the charts, I'm pretty much going to target the oils, especially if someone's going, well, I don't eat a lot of grains. I don't eat a lot of processed wheat. Then I'm going, eh, all right, well, then we've got some oil issues. So something to keep in mind. Also, a lot of us will stress eat junk food even though we think it's healthy for us. Read your labels of your junk food. If it does not say expeller pressed on any of those oils that you're getting out of, say, your yummy taro chips or your yummy sweet potato chips, guess what? They're not so healthy for you. So read labels. Very, very important. So why the heck do I want to talk to you about omega-3 fatty acids? Well, I find them absolutely amazing because they do a ton of stuff for us. They help keep our blood viscous so nice and and oily and, and I don't know how to explain it, I guess, just nice and oily. <laughs> Ugh, I'm a blonde today. Boy, but nevertheless, it, it prevents inflammation because if our blood is sticky and it's not super slippery, it sticks and bounces to the sides of our artery walls. And if we get that bouncing of blood flow off the artery walls, it damages the cells. And now we end up having possibilities for plaques in our arteries. So we want our blood to be very viscous, very slippery. And that's what omegas can do. Now they also can interrupt our inflammation process by blocking prostaglandins, blocking the arachidonic acid. So that's that omega-6s that come from eating too much animal products. And so it can block that. And that's an amazing thing because if we have too much arachidonic acid, now we have stickier blood. So you want slippery blood. All right, so for example, one of the big things that I like to use omega-3 fatty acids for is for the folks that get PMS and the folks that get menstrual pain. So like ladies getting cramps before your period, if you take omega-3 fatty acids, your chances of having period cramps can be a heck of a lot less. And guys, if you're listening to this, save your ladies. Go get them some fish oil or get them some flax or omegas of any type of vegan source and give them to them. It's huge for preventing cramps and even back pain associated with the period. Now, another biggie that I love omega-3 fatty acids for is that they help to keep our mast cells from not being too sensitive. So our mast cells are our cells that release histamines. And histamines are the ones that cause itching and redness. Just think mosquito bite, like a big fat mosquito bite. That's all thanks to histamines. And so you can prevent this by getting some omega-3 fatty acids in because omega-3s are fats, right? And if you've had a science class anytime recently, or maybe this might jog your mind from way back in the day from school, you have this layer called the phospholipid bilayer around every single one of your cells. And we need fatty acids to create this phospholipid bilayer. And so if we have good amounts of omega-3s, our useful fatty acids in the body, we can make these cell, uh, they're not really cell walls because plants have cell walls, but it's, it's our cell layer. It can make all of our cells super strong. That being said, we use omega-3 fatty acids for helping with eye health, for helping with nerve health, for skin health, because what it does is it works to keep all of our cells healthy. Nerve cells, our neural tissue, uses so much fat to help insulate the, the nerves. It's, it's ridiculous, and so it's amazing for brain health. That's why ketogenic diets are great for preventing seizures in children, it's because we're getting the good fats to keep that neural tissue healthy. Now, another big thing that having omega-3s in your diet can help with is the skin, like I mentioned before. And the reason being is because having those good fats in the body help manage your oil production because if you have good fats coming into the body, you're not gonna overproduce oils on your skin. And so that's a big thing with acne because a lot of times acne is not because your skin's too oily. It's actually because your skin is too dry. And so your body's trying to compensate for the dry skin and it overproduces oil. So how do you balance that? Omega-3 fatty acids. It also, those omega-3s can also help with hydration of your skin. And the reason being is because it locks in moisture. Fat will lock in oil and it'll lock in fluid to the skin. So that's absolutely huge, huge, huge. 
Another big thing is if you've ever had bumps on your upper arms, like these little tiny bumps, a lot of people will notice that they're hereditary. Maybe mom had them, maybe all the kids and sisters and brothers in the family have them. It's related to a fatty acid deficiency and a vitamin A deficiency, those, that combination. And it's, um, it's a huge issue that a lot of people have and are embarrassed by. So omega-3 fatty acids can help with this because it's going to help prevent this process called hyperkeratinization. It's, it's basically a protective mechanism that the body is, is putting out these little spines onto your skin to protect it. And you don't want it to do that. You want it to be nice and smooth. So omega-3 fatty acids are really, really huge in that department. Now the other biggie is that Omega-3s can protect your skin from sun damage because the EPA, a type of oil in there, helps to block the release of substances that will break down the collagen in your skin. And that's pretty freaking cool. So something to keep in mind with your omega-3 fatty acids. Then last but not least by any means is the component of mood and, and helping to chill you out. Omega-3 fatty acids are really great for calming the mind, but also working to increase melatonin production to help you to sleep. And so another biggie there. And one more, okay, I forgot. Omega-3 fatty acids can also help to increase calcium levels in bone. So we've got a ton of different areas here in which omega-3 fatty acids are awesome for you. The biggest thing that I want you to take away from today is that they help with tissues. Bones a tissue, skin's a tissue, and your blood and blood vessels. Those are all tissues. And so because omega-3 fatty acids are so critical to your cells, they help to get your cells, your layers of your cells nice and strong, they are vital to your overall health and longevity. So I highly, highly recommend that everybody goes out and grabs some form of omega-3 fatty acid. Or the other option is eating somewhere between three and six ounces of fish three days a week. Now we need to think about high quality fish here, wild caught salmons from very cold waters, thinking about things like halibut. Now, of course, there is the concern with mercury and toxicity. So it's one of those things to kind of consider, well, if you're getting an omega-3 fish oil, you also want to get that from a very high quality source, fresh water, or not fresh water, sorry about that, wild caught but very cold cold water fish this is important because if you're getting your fish source from you know somewhere in a very warm water area they're not as high quality fish oils as the cold water alaskan um, and nordic sources that's why i do recommend fish oil from nordic naturals which is one of my favorite companies another company is called stronger faster healthier they have really quality fish oils as well and then good old barleens barleens is a company that's been around a really long time but if you want to call them and you want to get a hold of their lab and find out how many parts per million of mercury are in their products in a certain lot, you get a hold of a really real live person in their lab. That's so cool. That impressed me. I can't say enough about that. that that's huge. So something to keep in mind if you're looking for a more cost-effective type of fish oil. Now, I'll go back into them at the end of my podcast, and they're also linked at the end of my podcast on drjkrausnd.com. So if you're looking for that, head over to my, my blog post there, and you'll see the, all the details to get a hold of those supplements. So what the heck do we do with these omegas once they get into the body if we're not using them right away? We actually will store them temporarily. And and ultimately, we can use omegas for energy too. I've mentioned pretty much all the uses for them for making our phospholipid bilayers, so our, our layers around our cells. Now, we also use omegas for making cholesterol. And that's really how it those omegas help with our moods and things of that nature too because we need some steroid hormones to help us with mood help us with periods help us with overall body balance and if someone has really really low cholesterol levels in their body chances are they're going to be depressed they're going to have some mood stuff so another big thing to think about because i've noticed some connections between really low cholesterol and depression so another interesting component if you have very low cholesterol levels. 
This is also a risk for folks that are vegan, something to take into account there as well. Now, this omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid balance also comes into play with something called an omega-9. Now, omega-9s are a, also another type of fatty acid, and it's a non-essential fatty acid that is produced naturally but when, when the body doesn't have enough of omega-3 or omega-6, but we can also get omega-9 from our diet. Avocados, pecans, cashews, almonds, hazelnuts, pistachios, macadamia nuts, chia, olives, and olive oil. Now, olive oil is typically the most common source of our omega-9s, but holy cow, um, deliciousness nuts, mm, yum, good amounts of our omega-9s there. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, okay, omega-3s, big in fish and flax and those guys, omega-6s, those are coming in our grains and our seed oils, okay, I, I think I'm balancing this stuff out. What do I do? Well, one of the things that I recommend um, to help to get your omega-3 in check is making sure, of course, that you're getting enough vitamin B6 because that's first and foremost. Most of us do not have a deficiency, like I mentioned before, of the omega-6s. Omega-6s are not a big deal. Just gonna be honest, I've never seen a deficiency because most of us will get in grains. Most of us will, if we're avoiding grains, we will have some type of oil that's going to give us the omega-6s. Now, in terms of omega-3s, where our big deficiency is, that's where I tend to see we need a little bit of help. And the good news is, is that some of our omega-3 rich nuts also have omega-9s in it too, so we can kind of balance that whole level out. Now, of course, one of the things questions I get from my patients is, is there a way to supplement omega-3, 6, and 9? There actually is. Nordic Naturals brand does have a 3, 6, 9 blend, and so you could consider that as well if you're thinking that you just don't get in pretty much any of the omegas in this case. Also, I will see that as an issue for some folks who have tree nut allergies, so something to keep in mind there. That's when we switch over to doing exclusively fish and the flax and chia. So... How do we fix our omega-3 deficiency? Like I mentioned before, three to six ounces of cold water fish three days a week. Now, granted, there is a mercury risk that goes along with this. I highly recommend looking at the Seafood Watch program. It's, it's a website, they've got an app, and it comes out of the Monterey, California Aquarium. So Seafood Watch, I'll put a link to it. You can check that out as well on my website at drjkrausnd.com. Now, two tablespoons of flax, chia, hemp, or pumpkin seeds can also give you some omega-3s as well. I tend to do that also in addition to taking some fish oil, and it's just kind of like my backup, if you will. And I make sure that I grind my flax and chia and hemp at home. Pumpkin, I tend to toast. I like to home toast it, you know, about 400 degrees, a little salt, just throw it in on the cookie sheet with a little bit of avocado oil, boom, done. Now I've got my omega-3 and omega-9 with the avocado oil. Boom, there you go, done. So also another way to get in these omega-3s is an ounce and a half of raw or home-toasted walnuts, pistachios. Those guys are your two big sources of omega-3s in the nut department. Now the other way to fix your omega-3 deficiency in addition to supplementing with vitamin B6 is to detoxify your liver. And one of the most amazing ways to detoxify your liver is very easy. Two cups of cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, beets, or carrots a day for like two weeks. That will clear out your liver. Of course, stopping drinking for at least a month or so while you're doing that extra supplementation of the cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, that helps up big time. So if you're going for bonus points, what you would do is two to four weeks, ideally four, of two, to, two cups of cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, beets, or carrots, in addition to not drinking and just eating as clean as possible. That will help to clear out your liver. It's quite amazing in that department. And if you live near an Asian store, if you get some burdock root, that is another amazing root that you could chop up, throw into a stir fry, and help to detoxify your liver a little more. It's good stuff. All right, so I talked about the brands I like 
a little bit before I'm going to talk about them again. Disclosure, I do not get money to promote these companies. I actually really like these companies. I've used them all for years, and there's reasons why I like each and every one of these ones. So Nordic Naturals being my favorite capsule form of fish oil, I use Pro Omega. Typically between three and four grams a day is what I recommend for the dosage. So that's three to four grams of the fish oil. That's EPA and DHA combined. And in particular, the Pro Omega is, has been known to not cause fish burps. So if you're struggling with fish burps and you're like freaked out that, you know, you've had fish oil before and you got burps, Nordic Naturals is really amazing in that department as they really do work to prevent that. Now, if you do have trouble with fish burps and you don't want to spend the money on Nordic Naturals and you want to go for, say, the Costco brand, why don't you throw your bottle of fish oil in the freezer? And when you take your fish oil, it'll still be frozen. So by the time it opens up, it's in your intestines. Now, granted, you're putting cold little capsule bombs into your gut and you know how I feel about frozen things and how that's difficult to break down if you've listened to any of my other podcasts. But hey, I have to admit that if I take fish oil supplements at 10 o'clock in the morning, I really don't like burping up fish oil. That's so not cool. So there you go. Something to think about. Nordic Naturals is great for preventing fish oil burps. Lesson of the day. Barleans, this is another great company. Like I mentioned before, you can call their lab and find out how much mercury is in a certain lot of their supplements and a live person talks to you. So that's pretty darn cool. So I've been a, a loyal uh, Barleans promoter, especially for those of you who are trying to save some money. Their, their products are great. Their flax oil is great too. I also recommend their fish oil blends, but I don't recommend all their swirls. There's just too many flavors in there that can cause gastric irritation. So go with the straight real deal fish oil or flax oil and call it good. And then my last company that I recommend is Stronger, Faster, Healthier. They're kind of popular in the CrossFit world, but they're, they're an amazing company. And I think that if you look at the profile and the breakdown of where they get their fish oil from and the fact that they're using natural, and, and I gotta hate the word natural, maybe I should say more. They are using really high quality sources of flavoring for their fish oils. They use peppermint, they use orange, and they use lemon. They make all of their fish oils taste absolutely delicious to the point where you almost want to guzzle them, which I know sounds really creepy, but they are high quality fish oils with high quality flavorings added and they're extract flavorings. They're not synthetic flavorings. So something to keep in mind for someone who's looking for a fish oil that's not encapsulated. They have oils and you could add it, yes, to a a smoothie if you wanted to, or you could just drink it straight up in terms of a tablespoon at a time. I absolutely love their peppermint fish oil. It sounds creepy, but it's freaking good. So, you know, mix it up, see what you like best. The reason I like theirs is for flavor, but also because fish oil, when you're in a capsulated, encapsulated form, sometimes it's hard for people to digest and the actual oil does a little bit better. So there you have it, just easier for those who have gut issues. So I've kind of broken down my favorite brands. I've broken down why we need some omega-3s in our life. And I've put in my resources how to test for your metabolism of fatty acids. I use the NutriEval by Genova Diagnostics. I've also put in the resources how we metabolize omega-3s and omega-6 fatty acids because I think it's important for us to, to take a look at that and just read through it if you're really wanting to learn more on this. I didn't geek out on it. I, uh, I think that in this case, if you want more information, grab it from there. But the whole point of me doing this five session series in terms of the supplements and, and the nutrients and vitamins that I see folks most commonly being deficient in is, is a huge component because glycine being my first episode in this five episode series, that was my episode 26, magnesium being episode 27, episode 28 being all of the B vitamins, episode 29, my previous episode, vitamin D, and now omega-3s. Now you have the 
five categories of what I supplement myself with because I've seen these deficiencies in myself as well in addition to the majority of my patients. And so the big component here is, or the answer here to one of the big questions that I get asked pretty much every day is, well, what supplements do you take? Well, I've just outlined it for you, all five of them. I take glycine every single day to help me with recovering from the gym and from gardening. Holy cow, gardening is brutal, just just saying. So glycine, I take three grams a day of that. Magnesium, I take a thousand milligrams of magnesium a day. In terms of my B vitamins, I take a B complex every single day. The B complex that I use is B Supreme by Designs for Health. Now, vitamin D, absolutely a huge biggie. I do that as well. And then omega-3 fatty acids. I am a gal who bounces between stronger, faster, healthier fish oil, peppermint flavor, and Nordic Naturals Pro Omegas. It just depends on if I'm feeling like making a pepperminty smoothie or if I feel like having capsules, I just bounce back and forth. I think it's good to switch things up once in a while. So there you have it in terms of the five main categories the deficiencies that I see in patients and that I think are critical vitamins to your overall functioning, plus preventing fatigue, preventing chronic aches and pains, and just kind of helping you to live a longer, happier, healthier life. So that is it for this episode on why you should consider getting in some omega-3 fatty acids into your life. And I really highly encourage you to check out my resources from this episode so you can see the brands and what I'm thinking about in terms of metabolism of omega-3s and 6s. And yeah, it's been another episode of The Health Fix. I look forward to giving some more good information as I move forward into my next series where I'm going to start talking about how to take care of your feet and then ankles and kind of move up from there in terms of how to take care of your bones and joints to get the most out of your body. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to The Health Fix, the podcast all about taking control of your health, rebelling against aging, and having fun every day. A lot of patients ask me, do you think I'm aging too fast? So I created an evaluation checklist for you to see for yourself. Plus, I created a resource guide to help you slow down the aging process right now. You can find it for free on my website, drjkrausnd.com. If you like this podcast, help get the word out to others by liking it and rating it. If you'd like more natural health tips and want to join our Facebook community where I interact daily, click on the Join Group button on our website at drjkrausnd.com.